Welcome to part seven in my Excel Power Query tutorial series. This tutorial series is specifically designed to teach you how to use Excel Power Query to acquire, clean, and wrangle your data for advanced analytics, and even use Power Query itself to implement advanced analytics techniques. The subject of this particular tutorial is merging tables of data, or if you're more familiar with this terminology, joining tables of data. So let's go ahead and flip over to Excel and get started. Per the usual, I'm in the Excel workbook associated with this particular tutorial video. If you're interested in getting the file, check the description below the video. There'll be a link to the GitHub where you can get the Excel workbook. Now I'm gonna make an assumption that you're already familiar with Excel's Mighty V lookup function. Most Excel users are, but if you're not for whatever reason, once again, check out the description below the video. I'll put a link to another one of my tutorials on my channel that talks about VLOOKUP. Now, when you first get started with Power Query, and merging tables of data, thinking of it in terms of VLOOKUP is a very, very good way of doing it. VLOOKUP is Excel's way to join up tables of data. You can see here, I've got a very contrived example to be sure. This is what's known as the left table. So you can see it's basically an order table, right? I've got some orders here and there's some products in here. And what I need to do is populate this column and this column with data from the product table. Now you'll notice that I've de designated these as the left table and the right table specifically because these are important terminologies when you start working with Power Query because Power Query uses join terminologies and they talk about left joins and right joins and inner joins and to keep it straight in your mind's eye and you think of left and right tables. So we've got a left table here, which is my orders and I wanna join up or VLOOKUP into the right table. And if I click on one of these cells here, I've got a bunch of VLOOKUPs going on here. The thing you need to remember first and foremost about VLOOKUP is that, yeah, it does what's known as a left join, right? I have my order table and I write VLOOKUP code to pull in data from the right table into the left table. But it doesn't work exactly like a left join in most programming environments. And Power Query is a programming environment, make no mistake. So you'll notice one primary difference here between VLOOKUP and what you'll see in Power Query is that notice that in my product table, I have a product ID duplicated. Again, it's a contrived example. And you can see here, I've even called it duplicate product. But notice that when I do a VLOOKUP, it only pulls the first match. And that's super, super important because left joins, as we'll see here, in a minute in Power Query actually will match on every piece of data in the table. VLOOKUP doesn't do that. And to really cement this idea, I'm gonna show you how it actually works in Power Query. We can do a left join scenario. We have the left table and then we have the right table, but notice this. Notice that when you do this type of lookup, this type of join, this type of merge in Power Query, it's going to match every piece of data that it can find. And it's gonna say, look, you've only got one entry for product ID one in the original left table, but you've got two product ID ones in the right table. So I'm gonna go ahead and match them up twice because that's the way I work. We'll see this in more detail in a moment when we look in Power Query and we actually specify a left join, but this is a key thing to remember. And I'll revisit this again in later videos in the series. So let's go ahead and take a look at Power Query now. So we're gonna go up to the data ribbon here as usual, and we're gonna click on queries and connections. And we've got a couple of queries already set up from previous videos. We've got our main ETL query here, and then we have our ticket group query, which we created in the most recent videos. We're going to merge these two. We're going to join these two in Power Query. So what we'll do here is we'll just hover over main ETL, and you can see what data is produced from the query, and we're just gonna click on the edit button here, and we're gonna fire up the Power Query editor. Now what we're going to do is specifically create yet another query as the result of merging the two existing queries that we have in this workbook already. And what we'll do is we'll go up to merge queries up here in the Power Query Editor ribbon. And we're gonna click on the down arrow here and we're going to select merge queries as new. And you'll notice we're already in our main ETL query and it will then bring up a dialog and Power Query will say, okay, look, you wanna start with this query because this is the one that you're in right now. Notice I can switch it if I'd like. I could switch it to the ticket group, but we want main ETL, so we'll leave it like this. And now we need to say, hey, what other table, what other query of data would we like to merge up with the main ETL query? So we just go down to this dropdown here and we say, okay, let's go ahead and pick the ticket group because that's exactly what we want. And we can see here the result of the ticket group. And if you recall from the previous video, what this query does is produce a table of data that for each individual distinct ticket number 
in the original data. It calculates the number of people with each type of title, Mr., Mrs., so on and so forth. It also calculates the ticket size, how many people are actually on the ticket, whether or not they're related. And lastly, what was the average ticket fare? And you'll notice here that in the join kind section of the dialogue here, it defaults to left outer. Now, if you're not familiar with this terminology, that's okay. Like I said, you can think of a left outer join as very much akin to a VLOOKUP. And you'll see here, it even gives you a little hint. So all from the first table, or all from the left table, because the left table is the first table, and then match from the second. Now that's not the only kinds of joins that you can do in Power Query. There's a whole bunch. Now the two most common by far that you use in practice are left outer joins and inner joins. The rest of these are useful in very specialized scenarios. If you're following the 80-20 rule, you're gonna be using lefts and inner joins most of the time. So let's just go ahead and focus on left outer join for this particular video. And what we need to do is tell Power Query, cool, we wanna do a left outer join with main ETL as the first table, as the left table, and we need to tell Power Query how to match up the data. So we just click on the columns that we wanna to use to perform the match. So this is very much like using a VLOOKUP once again, but it's all graphical. So we click on ticket here, and then we click on ticket here. And we'll see here, hey, this selection matches 891 of 891 rows from the first table. So what that tells us is that all the rows are preserved from the left table, and Power Query will try and join up as it can all of the data values from the right table. In this case, ticket group being the right table. We don't need to worry about fuzzy matching because we've got hard matches based on the ticket IDs. So we just click OK. And what we get here now is a brand new query. I'm just going to go ahead and close this down because I don't want that. And we've got a brand new query here called Merge 1. So what I'm going to call this actually is ticket group merge. That's what I'm going to name this particular query because we're going to save it off as a connection, not surprisingly. Let's go ahead and take a look at our handiwork here. So if we scroll over all the way to the right, we can see that we now have a new column added called ticket group, and it's actually a table. So if we saw this before in a previous video, but let's go ahead and just click on this part, not, not the table. See, I got a little hand there. Don't click there. Click right over here where you're still an arrow. And you'll see down here that essentially I'm getting a table back of one row as the result of this merge, as the result of this left join. And that's not exactly what we want. What we want are the individual values from the ticket group table. That's pretty easy to get. All we do is we click on this little button right here. And what this does is it expands out the table. So we click on that and we get a dialogue. We just need to change a few things. First up, we don't want to use the original column name as a prefix. And also we don't need ticket because we've already got ticket in the first table, so this would just add a duplicate column of data. So we just now click OK, and boom, we've expanded out all of these columns. And now look at this. For every passenger row, we now have all kinds of counts of what's actually going on in the data. We now have a really cool table of data. We have a query that we can use to do more advanced analyses than we were able to do previously. So let's go ahead and save this query off as a connection. So we're gonna go up to load, close and load, and select close and load two. And we're gonna say, look, only create a connection because we wanna reuse this over and over again in our workbook. So we just say, okay, create as a connection only. And lo and behold, we now have it right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and right click on this and now I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna produce a new table of data in a new worksheet in this workbook with all of that goodness that we just saw in the Power Query Editor. So I go down to load two, and then I say, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and create a table, and I'm gonna go ahead and say, put in a new worksheet, and I click OK, and voila. I now have my ticket group merge table. So I don't need the Power Query Connections dialog anymore, so I'll just go ahead and close that down. Let's fire up a pivot table and see what we can do with all this awesome data that we now have. So I'll just click in the table here, and I'll go ahead and insert a pivot table, and I'll put it in the existing worksheet, and I'm gonna go ahead and stick it over here, and AA2, and what we've got here is a pivot table. Let me scroll over so you can see everything. What we're going to do is we're gonna take a look at the survival rates, obviously, by class, because we already know that's pretty significant. So we can grab, drag new P class down here to the rows, and we get them over here. And what we're going to do now is Let's do ticket size. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna investigate this idea that maybe the number of people traveling on the ticket is highly predictive of survival on the Titanic, and also by class, because maybe larger families 
were more likely to survive in first class than they were in third. And then we need to put new survived in the columns and the values. Now we can easily visualize this by inserting a pivot chart. So up in the ribbon here, I can go over to pivot chart. And what we can see here is our clustered column. And I'll get rid of these things. I don't like them. I'll get rid of the grid lines. I don't like those. And you can see here, okay, in third class, look at that, perished is blue, survived is orange. So you can definitely see that larger family sizes in third class or larger ticket sizes, which are mostly families, but not always families, perish at a much higher rate than larger families in first class, definitely. Here's what's really cool. We can now add in one of those new features that we joined up as a result of our merging work in the Power Query Editor. Let's just drop misses in here. Let's say, hey, look, you know what? Let's analyze this by not only the number of people on the ticket, but also the count of the number of people with the title of misses for each ticket. And if we drop that right here, boom, check this out. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. And we can see here, third class. So we have two kinds of groups. Those with nobody with the title of Mrs. in the ticket group and those with one instance of Mrs. So this is probably indicative of families being traveling in third class. And you can see here, wow, right? Five, six, seven, no ticket with a ticket size this large and a passenger with the title of Mrs. survived. They all perished. And what you can see here is clearly a nice pattern where in first class, doesn't really seem to matter too much. You're gonna survive overwhelmingly, it looks like for the most part. Same in second class as well. That's the power of creating all the features that we've been doing throughout this tutorial series is to allow you to do analyses like this, right? This is a multi-dimensional bar chart. We're looking at three pieces of information at the same time, and this wouldn't have been possible without the types of data cleansing and wrangling that we've done so far in this tutorial series. That's it for this video. When the next video in the tutorial series is ready, I'll put it either here or here. And in the meantime, I'll put up a couple of other videos on my channel that you might find interesting. If you've been finding this tutorial series useful, would you mind helping me out and just smash that like button? That'll tell the YouTube algorithm that other professionals might benefit from this content and it'll help get distributed far and wide. Until next time, please stay healthy and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.